You've also got access to um, a brief practical and some solutions to that practical. So in that practical, um, there's a, a trial publication by Louvet et al comparing uh, gemcitabine against gemcitabine in combination with oxaliplatin for pancreatic cancer. And so the task is to complete the data extraction sheet as far as possible for the outcome of, of overall si survival and if you've got time, progression-free survival. So it just gives you a, um, a practice of the, the type of data to extract and, and also um, you can then input that into the, the spreadsheet that I mentioned just now to then obtain the estimate of log hazard ratio and standard error for these, the, these outcomes in this study. Um, and I'm very happy if you want to, if you have any problems with that practical, I'm very happy for you to get in touch and, and I can answer any questions um, or indeed about the, the webinar or, the, or any other questions um, afterwards. So just to, to wrap up, so time to event outcomes are, are common and very important in medical research. The, the hazard ratio is the preferred treatment effect measure that we're interested in when, um, when we're talking about time to event outcomes. It's important to be clear about your outcome definition when you're doing meta-analysis. So um, if, if the outcome is overall survival, then it's usually quite clear cut what events, um, you know, overall mortality events, what they mean. But sometimes it can be quite, quite difficult to understand um, the outcome definition. So be careful, that make sure that the, the trials being included in the meta-analysis have used um, a, a standardized definition of outcome. Um, I've presented a number of indirect approaches for, for estimating the hazard ratio. The reliability might depend on the level of information given. Um, for example, the, the number of um, decimal places for the, for the p-value, and also you might be limited by the quality of graphics presented. Um, but it's worth noting that if you have got uh, a, quite a number of Kaplan-Meier curves where you have to extract data for, for your meta-analysis. There are um, software packages available which, which will do this for you di di and, and digitize that data. Um, so that's worth exploring if you've got a number of, of Kaplan-Meier curves to extract data from. And do make your life easier by using the, the Excel spreadsheet that I referred to before. Um, that makes, makes life a lot easier. When it comes to um, presenting the results of the meta-analysis, if you have used these indirect methods, then it's important to also specify, specify this when you're um, discussing the results so that the reader can obviously understand if all of the estimates have been obtained by um, extracting data from Kaplan-Meier curves, then there's obviously a bit more uncertainty about the reliability of those estimates. And finally, I did mention that individual patient data does have many advantages. It's particularly true for, for time to event outcomes because um, it overcomes some of these problems with, with the quality of reporting, um, which, which can hinder meta-analysis of aggregate data. But it's also very useful for, for other um, more in-depth analyses. For example, if you wanted to thoroughly explore whether or not the assumption of proportional hazards was valid, then IPD is something that you would want to consider collecting.